What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over uh, Command List Part 2. So, this part will be a lot simpler than the first part. Basically, this is just going to be me uh, fixing up some of the issues that I had with the Command List, so specifically not being able to scroll through them or, or go through them in a way where you could actually see them all on the screen at once, and also adding controller support to it because we've never done controller support in something like a vertical box before, and so we can't really scroll through it with the controller, which we're going to absolutely need to do. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because we're also gonna be accessing it while the game is paused, which does change a few things with how we have to set up our input states and a few boxes we can check on the events themselves. We're gonna basically just go over the whole process and, and fix this up, and that way you'll know how to do it in the future. So if we pause our game, we can either control the the pause menu with the command list, or excuse me, we can control with the keyboard or with the mouse or with the controller, and we can get down to our command list here. We can go into that, and then we have our command list, or our move list. And you can see I can scroll through it with the mouse. So now we can actually see all of our attacks and options, and that's good. That's something we definitely need to be able to do. But I've also added logic to be able to scroll with the controller as well. Being able to scroll with the controller allows us to do this on you know anything. Now we can do it with the keyboard and mouse, we can do it with the controller, and that's a lot more convenient. I have left a spot open here for player two. If we wanna have player two also be able to view their move, move list at the same time, I know that's pretty common, but we will need to wait until we get into some more multiplayer menu stuff, which is going to be happening very soon. I wanna do the options menu first, and then that will be the next thing that comes when we talk about menus and input states is having uh, player two work on all these more complicated menus and having both players be able to work at the same time. Okay, so at this point, I don't have an exit button or anything just because I haven't added it. So I'm kind of stuck here, but we can close this and we can get into the episode. Now I don't have anything different with the code today. So there's nothing you need to copy from here, but if you are interested in catching up to where we um, have gotten to this point, Feel free to join the, feel free to click this I card right here in the top right corner. Um, this will lead you to the other command list episodes. We've done quite a bit of command list episodes at this point. I think we have eight or nine of them to date and uh, we still have more to do. So this will catch you up on the entire way we made our command list. And I, I mentioned there several times the other episodes that we'll be working on so you can get caught up fully. Otherwise, if you're interested in watching the entire series and want to get caught up and start making your own fighting game, then I'll leave the playlist right here for you. And at this point, we can go ahead and get started. So to, to start, we are going to make a few changes to some things that we kind of had hacks for. So first of all, we had this input action open pause menu. Basically, when I pressed the P key, then we were spawning the uh, command list menu. Well, we already have a pause menu, and the and the pause menu had a button for the command list. So really, we should just be opening the pause menu when we press P, and then we can go to the command list. So in this input action, I've switched the widget from the command list to the versus pause menu, which is this menu I have right here. And then move this over, and then I add it to the viewport. All right? And it's that simple, we make that minor change, and now the pause menu will open up when we press that button. Now I had these buttons here from before, so if you wanna look at any of the logic we did on the pause menu, I'll leave that episode right here in the top right corner. But otherwise, the important part is just the command list specifically. I'm gonna make a few changes in the pause menu just to make this go as smoothly as it can. So before, uh, when we were constructing this, the, the versus pause menu, in event construct, I was setting the input states to be like input game only, input UI only. When returning to the game, you can keep it as set input mode game only, no changes need to be made. But in event construct, since we now are going to want controller input on these menus, it's good to have input mode to game and UI. It technically isn't necessary, but there are some cases where the game will not pick up input from other devices if it's set to UI only. So a quick fix for a lot of those is to set the game to be, uh, the input mode to be game and UI. And it says it right here on here. Basically you set input mode and the UI will try to only respond to the user input, but if it doesn't handle it, the player controller gets a chance. And the player controller will then pick up any of the slack with any of the 
devices that we have plugged into it that are recognized by the game. So that's one minor change I made. And then we never actually filled out the command list button logic because I didn't have the command list prior to the previous episode in the series. So we'll go ahead and fill out this logic right now. When uh, the command list button is pressed, we're going to create the command list widget, which is just create widget. And you select your command list right here. Now, you don't actually need an owning player because the uh, versus pause menu is being owned by the base character BP. Well, actually the player controller of this pawn. Then you don't need to set an owning player here. This will actually just go to the pawn that owns the pause menu. But if you want to have multiple locations where you can access your command list, such as in the menu or things like that, you may want to still create a... You, you may want to still spawn it with an owning player just in case, just so that you can avoid any confusion down the line or any bugs down the line. And then we just add it to the viewport. Drag off of it, add to viewport. Now, there is one other thing I want to do, and I actually want to set a reference to the command list widget. And this is a little bit strange why we want to do this, but this also comes back to when we're in the menu and the game is paused, it doesn't actually want to pick up on the gamepad input related to the character. So the, the reason for this is that the game is paused. It's basically stopping any of the input actions from that character. So we, we capture this new input axis, which I'll go over in a minute, and we send that data to the command list widget so that we can actually scroll through this vertical box. But if we're doing that and the game is paused, this will never return a value other than zero, so then we can never scroll any. Okay? So we're actually going to have a reference here, and only if this reference is valid, we will then go ahead and do that. Now, it will technically be valid uh, after we close it as well, but that's for another episode. That's for when we close that. All right, the way I've done this is I have in my base character BP, I just made a new variable. I called it command list widget reference. And for the variable type, I just made it my command list widget. Object reference. Okay, and you don't have to do this just yet. I'll get to this in a second, but you can finish this up here. You can get owning player pawn, which is different from owning player. This, the owning player is the player controller. The owning pawn is the character. So we're going to cast it to the character. I'm casting it to my base character because all characters should be able to do this. And then I drag off of it and set command list widget reference. And I pass in the widget that we created. All right. And at that point, we are actually done with the versus pause menu and we can get into the actual command list stuff. So in the command list itself, there are a few things we need to add. Well, first of all, I added a background image. It's not necessary, but something I did want to show you guys is if you want to add a background image quickly, you know, you can, you can size it up and make it work. But remember we had that episode on anchors, which can be used to make sure that the screen fits with different scaling and different sizes. So I'm going to start trying to do that a little bit more and be more mindful of that to cause less work down the line. So you can actually, if you want a background image, you can go to, you can drag an image onto the screen like I did here, go to anchors and check, uh, check this big one right here, click the big one right here, and it will then expand to the full size if you leave everything default. You can make everything zero. We'll leave no offset and it will cover up the whole screen. I also made it a zero order of negative one just so I could actually, uh, you know, have things in front of it. And then I changed the tint by double clicking this right here. In fact, you can single click it, I think. And then just change your color. So I made it like this gray color. Not really important, but I just want to show you why I did that. And I wanted to talk about the anchor thing that I learned. Now, I am doing the thing that I uh, talked about in that anchor episode, by the way. That way, this scales with the screen. 
the short version, if you don't want to watch that episode, is have a scale box that's scale to fit, stretch direction both. Have a size box that's a child of the scale box and set the min desired width and height. And then put your object, all your contents within that. So I had a canvas panel. I put the canvas panel in that. Now we already had this command elements VB, which is the command elements vertical box. But last time we couldn't scroll. If you want to be able to scroll with the mouse, what you need to be able to do, or what you need to do is drag a scroll box in right here. Just, you can drag it in anywhere in the screen and then just resize it to how far you want to be able to scroll. So this is basically, these dimensions you see here are what take up the, where I can scroll and where I can see the commands from on the screen. So if you wanted to go, you could go top to bottom if you wanted, but I left a little bit of buffer here. You can then just uh, make the vertical box a child of the scroll box. So everything in the vertical box will then be able to be scrolled through by using the scroll box. You don't have to actually change anything to make it work with the mouse. You will have a functioning scrolling command list at that point. A few things I recommend changing, the scroll bar visibility. You'll see it uh, if you don't make it hidden by default. So you can just see a scroll bar on the right, which looks, it, it looks good when you're using the mouse, it makes sense. But when you're using the controller, it's a little bit weird. It can work though, and you can modify it and make it look nicer and change the image of it. So if you want that, keep it. And that's all you need to do uh, altering the command list here. We're going to need to change some things within the graph, but that's basically the last part of the episode. And then this is the command list element. I just made it shorter. It's not really important, anything I did here, but I just wanted to let you know that I did make it a little bit shorter, and I made this uh, horizontal box a little bit bigger just so that my icons could fit better within them. They were actually a little bit too big. They're still a little bit too big, but I made the, everything a little bit smaller and more compact just so you're up to date on the changes I made. All right, and now what we have to do, this is the hardest part, is we have to make it so that the gamepad can actually scroll our scroll box, and we can scroll through our command list using the gamepad. So gamepad is a controller, or it could be a fight stick, or basically anything like that, just not a keyboard and a mouse. So the way we have to do it is a little bit strange, but it's not too bad. If we go into Edit Project Settings, Input, we can scroll down to our input axes. We do want to make this an input axis because if we don't, then we can only pass it a specific value when we're pressing up and down. And on something like a scroll box, you kind of want it to be responsive to the joystick. So if my thumbstick is down only half, I only want it to go half the scrolling speed. So I go down to axis mappings, I add a new one, and I call it gamepad menu scroll down. I'm very specific here because we might want to use gamepad left thumbstick y axis again in a different spot. So I want to make sure I separate this from other places where I might use it. And you can put other things in here. You could put keyboard in here if you wanted to be able to control it with the keyboard and not the mouse. You could put other sticks that you need. All I need is gamepad left thumbstick y axis. I set the scale to be negative one by default because negative one is it happens to be the scale that I liked for the movement. Basically, if you make it one, it'll invert the movement. So as you press down, the scroll box scrolls up. So I just made it negative one. And you're done with this. You don't need to do anything else with this. In your base character BP, which is where we uh, change the command list to be the pause menu. So our basic character. Then you want to basically check for this input. Now, this is this is why things were weird. When it's paused, this would normally fail. You could do it outside the character, but you do want a pawn or something when you're checking for input, unless you just want to check on tick for your input. Well, you don't really want to do that. It will be a little bit slower than this method, even though this is basically a tick since there's an input access. But without getting into all that, this is, a little bit of a better method because this function isn't getting called constantly. So what we can do is we can check on our base character BP. All characters should be able to do this. So we want to do it in here. And we can get this new input axis. Okay, you click this. And you have this guy right here. Input axis gamepad menu scroll down. Now it has an axis value by default because that's what input axes do. When you click on this, after you spawn it, click on this, and make sure you click Execute When Paused. That will make sure that 
if the game is paused, this will still send the value through. That is something you absolutely need to do since we were using Unreal's built-in pause function to pause our game. If you're not pausing the game for whatever reason, whether you're not following the series uh, specifically, or you just don't need to for what you want to set up, then you don't have to do execute when paused. And now I only want to call this, this event that I've made in the command list, which we'll cover next, if this is valid. So what we can do now is grab our command list widget reference, which we sent in the pause menu, get it, right click on it, convert to validated get, and then you know you can drag into it here and only if it's valid do we want to call this function or this event. So let's go make this event. We want move scroll box down is what I called it. Go into your command list. This is where we have our vertical box and our scroll box now. And I don't have, I have the stuff in the construct for where we get all the inputs and create all the command list elements and add them to the vertical box. But we did not add anything to construct this episode. So this is all from last episode. All I've done is I've added a custom event. Click this and I call it move scroll box down. You can also add variables to these. So I added an input parameter right here. I called it scroll amount and I made it a float. So basically what's going to happen here is we're going to grab the value from the analog stick, in this case the left thumb stick. We are going to apply it to the scroll offset of the scroll box and then we are going to make sure that we can't go above the limits of the scroll box or below the inputs, the, the limits of the scroll box. That way regardless of the inputs that are put into it, it will always be within the proper bounds and we can always see the move list on the screen. That's what this is basically doing. So now that we've made this event, you can go ahead and call it now just to be safe. You do have to drag off your command list widget since it's an event in there and just type move scroll box down. And then go ahead and pass in your axis value to the new float input parameter you had. Now we're done with everything but this last part. So let's fill this out. I'm grabbing my command list scroll box. So this is the new scroll box I made that is a parent of the vertical box. If you don't have it as a variable, make sure you click on their scroll box, go to the details panel, check is variable. And then you can bring that into the screen. Now, you can do a few things here that are really helpful for what we need. We don't have a way to just scroll a certain amount. We can set the scroll offset and things like that to make the scroll box manually scroll, but we don't have a way to actually just send a scroll value. What we need to do is get scroll offset. So this will get the current scroll offset. So if we're right at the top, we have a scroll offset of zero. We have not scrolled at all. All right. And then we have the scroll amount that's coming in. Now, I multiply this by 10. You can ignore this for now if you want. I multiply it by 10 because it turned out that that was the speed I liked using it at. That will depend on you, what you prefer when using the joystick, you know, the analog stick. If it feels good without any multiplication or if it's too slow or if it's too fast, you modify it. But I would suggest adding a multiplier regardless just to make sure that you can change it to your liking. So you can drag off of this and just do float times float. Okay. And then the other thing I do, I have get scroll offset and I also have get scroll offset of end. And this will get the scroll offset at the very bottom of the scroll box. So you have the top, well, you have the current and then you have the bottom. Well, the top will always be zero. You won't be able to scroll above zero. It starts at zero. So if you don't want them to go above zero when scrolling, or basically if you don't want to be able to scroll up above the first entry in the move list, then you'll know to check for zero. And then this is the bottom. So whatever value this is, this is the last index in the entry, the end of the vertical box and the end of the scroll box. Okay. That's what those nodes mean. And it's a little jumbled here. There's a lot going on, but I'll try to do my best to elaborate. So I use my command list scroll box and I get my, my scroll offset. I add float plus float the uh, result of the float times float. So basically the amount of scroll that we've done, so if we press up or down on the analog stick and how much, gets added to the current scroll offset. I then check to see if it's greater than or equal to zero. So if it was going to go above the first index, you would have this space, right? You would have this empty space 
above the scroll box where you know there's nothing there it's a move list so you're above the first index there's just nothing there it would look really ugly it would look unprofessionally done because you could scroll where there weren't any elements so i make sure that it's greater than or equal to zero if we're going to add to this and if it is then great we can continue on to the next check if it's not i go ahead and set the scroll offset of the scroll box to this blue node this blue line is from the scroll box it goes all the way over here and i call set scroll offset on it three different times there's three different cases this first case if it is less than zero basically if it's above the top of the scroll box it goes to this case right here this case sets the new scroll offset to be 0, 0.0 it basically means don't you know if we're going above zero just set it to be zero we don't need to do anything else we don't want it to go any higher okay but if it's true that this is greater than or equal to zero then allow yourself to scroll so we're going to go to another branch now what we're going to do is we're going to take the same float plus float that we had and we're going to compare it the value the value we have here to see if it's less than or equal to the get scroll offset of end so the bottom of the scroll box if it is then great we go to the final condition we set scroll offset but if it's not if it's false and the current value is greater than the scroll offset of end that means this is below the scroll box bounds if it's below the scroll box bounds you have the same issue as you did up top you have empty space in this move list you're still scrolling and there's no moves down there so it looks ugly and it looks like maybe there's something hidden down there but there's not so if it's false and it was greater than that then we want to set the scroll offset to be just the get scroll offset of end basically we want to set it to the bottom value we have on the scroll box otherwise if both of these are true we're going to set the scroll offset to be the result of this float plus float here and that'll be our new offset and now when we run this I can pause at any time you go to our command list I can click in here and I can move this with my uh, left thumbstick now I'm holding up the entire time right now you saw it scroll to the top I'm still holding it as soon as I release and as soon as I push down we're back down again if you didn't do those other additional checks you would just keep scrolling so one of two things would happen it would either you'd have all that empty space or it would look like this but then you'd have to hold down for the the correct amount of time to get rid of all that extra space so that's why those extra checks are really helpful and now i can do this with the uh, gamepad i can do it with the scroll wheel which is what this is i can technically do it with both if i wanted but you see my point There you go. And that's how you can get your command list. Basically, again, at this point, it's basically finished. We can add player two. We can add more inputs to it and things like that. But at this point, you have a generally complete command list. All right, guys. So that's all I got for you today. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please subscribe. That's more for the channel and more for me than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys so much for, well, supporting me. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. You guys deserve so much more. So thank you. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out with any of the issues you had. And lastly, guys, if you want to come check out some programming live streams every Friday on this channel, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do live streams for a side-scroller game like Castlevania. So I'd be happy to see you there and answer any questions you had. But that's all I got for you today, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.